something real special that I think you really like. In, in, a, in a concise one sentence. about the details of this uh, uh, very unique project that I'm, I'm offering you an exclusive first look at. It is Bobby Lee from uh, St. Parish in Louisiana. You grew up, sir, from Creative Arts Agency. How you doing today, sir? Is this your private cell? Uh, I believe it was George Clooney who, who the other day while I was having lunch with him and Brad. Sounds like a little bit of a commotion in the back. So are you at a uh, NASCAR race again? I uh, am on this beautiful coach team. I forget the number. I'm ready to settle in and buckle up and enjoy a nice Jack Daniels. Sir, I will have you hooked before you take off and I'll have you show before you land. So let me just tell you about what it is. Well, I, I I got to the tape, and after I saw the tape, I knew I had to go. I knew I knew these kids were mm -hmm. something real special that I think you really like. Just in a in a concise one sentence. Um, in a one sentence, um, concise pitch. Uh, I'm ready to settle in and buckle up and enjoy a nice Jack Daniels. Uh, are you want to know about the party? Man, I'll tell you about the party. I'll tell you fucking everything. Basically, I got myself <clears throat> months ago. I'm jumping on my bed like a flying squirrel, like a little girl hurt by the big bad. Uh, tape that was called well, the graduation party. So let me just tell you about what it is. Well, I, I, I got to the tape, and after I saw the tape, I knew I had to go. I knew, I knew these kids were... Something real special that I think you really like. Just in a, in a concise one sentence. Um, in a one sentence, um, concise pitch. Uh, I'm ready to settle in and buckle up and enjoy a nice Jack Daniels. Uh, are you want to know about the party, man? I'll tell you about the
Uh, Mr. Bryan, let me explain, let me be brief about the details of this uh, uh, very unique project that I'm, I'm offering you an exclusive first look opportunity at. The city, this town, this, 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 no one's ever seen something like this before. Let me break it down for you in the most simplest uh, um, words I can, I, I can conjure. Basically, I got myself <clears throat> months ago uh, a tape that was called the Graduation Party Labels. We thought nothing of it. It's over. I mean, I, I'm in my woods. Uh, you wanna know about the party? I mean, I'll tell you about the party. I'll tell you fucking everything. Basically, I got myself <clears throat> months ago. I'm dropping on my bed like a flying squirrel, like a little girl hurt by the big bad world. Uh, a tape that, that was called the well, graduation party something real special that I think you really like. It's involving horses, reality, a girl giving a donkey a lap dance. Individuals at a graduation party. Girls dancing and <laughs> and ripping off each other's clothes and Where the hell's my shirt? For a, a small online college. <laughs> Purpose of education. You know you gotta give it all to it's in my interest to find out what's going on because this would be historic if this was actual found footage of a legitimate nature. He thinks of me when he's fucking you. Yeah, I think you'll be quite entertained by it. And let's touch base soon. Because I'd like to know where I stand in all this because my reputation's at stake. Get your freak on. I will do that. Okay, I'll wait right here. I'm sure by now you know that the footage you found surrounding a massive house fire Which makes many people wonder how it could have happened i mean my words we got lucky in the sense shock and and awe that such a thing would happen fire. okay how big an unfortunate incident it's like huge. that we got lucky in the sense of it's a huge it's fire. a terrible trap <laughs> Actually, may be what Hollywood has fictionalized for so long. <laughs> the true <laughs> found footage <laughs> of the last hours <laughs> of a group of people. You guys have taught me a lot about myself. Who the audience will connect with on a sympathetic level. <laughs> I love you though. <laughs> because this was their last hours alive of a film. I just want to say thanks. I mean, it's it's profound, yet it will reach the common man who will understand the gravity of this kind of footage. With approximately seven, six to seven hours of raw the footage, this, artist, this artistic weight, if you will, of this kind of footage. Oh. And what's interesting to people is real drama. Well, and I pray. Ever since we had this whole damn uh, you know, real world thing, everyone's been trying to bite on it and, and reproduce it and, 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 you know, bottle the magic once again. To keep your precious love. It's hard, you know, it's really hard to do something because it gets contracted. Oh, before. Well, you know, it's, this is just one of those things that just happened. We just got lucky. I mean. <laughs> Why were there? Why were there cameras? What, it was just a party. I mean, it wasn't. Why? Why the? Why the cameras? Well, we're still trying to piece together exactly why those cameras were there. But I can tell you, with millions of dollars worth of artwork and um, 
a beautiful house like that. Uh, obviously, whoever rented this place uh, wanted to protect their investment quite a bit. Like security? Was there like a control room or something with with all the little little videos or what? You watch a lot of movies, don't you? I, I too many. What what four hundred? That's why so that's like a ridiculous amount of cameras. Like I could understand maybe like one for each room and one for outside, but four hundred that's that's like a little creepy. They were situated throughout the house, uh, designed from what we could gather so that there would be no corner that would not be filmed. Um, you know, that was the intention. It appeared as though they weren't going to have any dead zones. Unfortunately, there were some dead zones. Um, several of the cameras malfunctioned. Other of the cameras appeared not to have been in use. Um, but from what we were able to piece together, it certainly uh, appears as though the intent was for security purposes so that the events of that evening could be recorded. We haven't ruled out blackmail as another possible motive. This is this is a lot a lot to hear. I'm just I didn't I didn't know about why am I so like out of the loop about everything like the, the murders. Come on. You're telling me in six months nobody's told you that this guy hung himself. I didn't I didn't hear anything. I've just been kind of in my own little world. You know, I've made a lot of new friends. I've kind of been kind of hanging with a new crowd. Um kind of like the popular crowd. Um, I go to like wine tastings, um, you know, the horse races, art galleries, um, Broadway plays. I haven't, I haven't, you know, really spoken to anyone since, since the shindig. I'm gonna be honest, uh, I know a lot of you by face. You're Evan, Evan, you're my boy. <laughs> You, you're you're pretty cool. Now. We've had some good times. <laughs> Lots of drinks. Um. Uh, fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. Hard, yeah. <laughs> fuck you. You're pretty cool. Johnny <laughs> Crow! <laughs> and fuck you. I'm out. We got lucky in the sense of a pure professional analysis of. Welcome, class of 2011. All my life, I wanted to grow up. I wanted to grow older so people would take me seriously. It all sounded so good to me. Growing up, getting a job, getting married. 
but it's all a scam. <laughs> Uh, it, it seems that these individuals who had absolutely no fame during their lives have discovered fame um, posthumously due to these uh, incredible um, scenes of very ordinary uh, activities rendered meaningful by their proximity to their death. I'm Mr. Bryant. I think you really like it. Of course, there was nothing fortunate about what happened. It was a tragedy of unspeakable proportions. And I knew that this was a tragedy. I mean, we were watching the last hours of their lives. I mean, think about that. We were watching the last hours of their lives. I mean, these kids, this was the last hours of these kids' lives. I mean, to me, that was some compelling television. And this man agreed. And he bought it. Comcast and NBC bought it. So a lot of the parents got pissed because, of course, the parents got pissed. They're now looking for an investigation about whether, was it awesome? Was it, was it homicide? Was it a suicide pact? Did someone kill these kids? Was it an accident? Is there someone to sue? Is there someone to go after and arrest? I mean, they, they had questions out the ass. I mean, who I had questions out the ass. And I was many questions because, you know, I just wanted to close the deal. And as we closed the deal for the riots to make essentially this incredible tragedy that was, oh shit, it was in the news cycle for two and a half weeks in 2013 in spring. And, uh, you know, this whole thing had been uh, at the tipping point of a national story, you know. Anyway, Turns out that as we uh, basically close the deal and uh, basically have a schedule for late fall for the uh, premiere of the graduation party, we have a, a kind of co incidentally and concurrently, in, you know, in a parallel sense, an FBI investigation commenced by one of the parents of one of these uh, deceased students who uh, was the uh, South Carolina senator who commenced this FBI investigation, got these boys involved, two senior agents, and they started questioning everybody, especially the boy who survived. I mean, they asked, it was 19 dead or something like that. But I'll tell you something right now, there's one kid that survived, and, you know, some people say he died of a broken heart. This boy lived because of a broken heart. And that's this whole new story altogether. Anyway, so he came in there as a key witness, uh, talked to the FBI. They suspected him at first, but this guy would give him a fly. He was to good people, this kid. And, uh, he, uh, you know, he had gotten shafted. He had gotten the wrong thing. But he's doing good now, and, and God bless him. But he represented kind of, you know, the last link between the, 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 the fate of these kids that, you know, had grown on America. I mean, here we have three things happening. We have, you know, a crime that's being investigated. Uh, we have circumstances surrounding it becoming more and more disturbing and convenient, like, you know, who's filming this shit and who's sending it to us and why they send it to both uh, the FBI as well as the studios and who, you know, who's behind this thing? I mean, it became very kind of, uh, what was the practical joke kind of thing, but hey, I was awarded the rights legally and, I, and even though I was dealing with a proxy or an entity that I had no idea who was, owned it, it was like doing business with a fucking Swiss bank account. It didn't matter to me because as long as I get my 10%, who the fuck, I don't give a fuck who made the damn thing, okay? If it was Fellini, uh, you know, Tarantino or fucking Austin Wells coming back from the dead, it just don't make no difference to me. You know what I'm saying? I get my 10% no matter whose hands are on it. So, I make my deal, NBC does their thing, and then as we're airing this shit, and this thing's, you know, taking through the roof, and it's going, it's going to the point where they, you know, we, we want to make a, we want to renegotiate the deal to, to double the terms. But that, as that happens, new evidence is introduced, shall I say. And uh, one of these uh, dead kids all of a sudden turns up alive. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 this, this black girl who was a sassy girl in, in the film. I mean, she was always uh, rubbing her butts up against people. But she um, she sent a little letter, and she uh, sent a little tape, a little outtake, if you will, of some footage that had not been uh, broadcast or even shown to NBC, to my knowledge. Well, I certainly didn't see it, and I sold it to them. But the, but 
but, but the footage was uh, quite telling in what it did. And after all that, the, I mean, a scandal ensued, and we were trying to figure out what the fuck was going on, and who did what to where, were they alive, where were they, who did this, what was the purpose, was this true, was this fake footage, uh, who knew? So finally, they started to figure out, so I figured out that, yeah, they had actually filmed this, and they got the filmmaker in there, they actually found the film. Welcome.